Uh, true. Plus, all through this show, we've got highlights of a live onstage talk show that I did at the Flashback Weekend Horror Convention, headlined by Robert Anglin wearing his Freddy Krueger makeup for one final time. Who's this? Sure is ugly. I just told you. My chair moved. Well, I was able to have a nice sit-down chat with some great horror stars at the Flashback Weekend Horror Convention with a special live talk show benefiting the expensive conversion of digital projection for the Midway Drive-In Theater. We've got some highlights of our talk show for you throughout this program. Like this. You know, that's the nicest greeting a guy in a Kmart wig ever got, I think. Here in his full Freddy makeup for the final time, please welcome Robert England. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to risk that. Oh, not the chicken, no, my Not goodness. the chicken. Thank you so much uh, for coming here, Robert. We're all very excited about this. Thank you, girls. And I, I've got to say... <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Charlie, the angels are here. I know. I don't go anywhere without them. <laughs> I don't blame you. Okay, so is this the last time? I don't know if this is the last time... Uh, I'll tell you right now, it's, it's, I'm, I can't wait to tear it off. I've had enough <laughs> it's, uh, starting to get kind of itchy, but uh, I'm just happy to be here at Flashback. Let's get ready to party! <laughs> Robert, how long did it take to put on that makeup? This was the Robert Kurtzman Streamline. He took parts of three and four and combined them for this particular uh, convention, and... We got it done, I think, in about two and a half hours, wow. which is a record. It's normally three to get me camera ready for a really long shot because I didn't, I didn't put in the contact lenses or the teeth. Sure. I just blackened my teeth with uh, the hotel pizza. <laughs> <laughs> now, I saw in an interview you talked about the reason that you did not wear the hat. Would you tell everybody? No, I mean, I, you know, and I got all this grief on the Internet. You know, I got reamed for not wearing the hat. And the reason is... We're celebrating the 30th anniversary of Nightmare on Elm Street. We're celebrating Flashback Weekend. And we're celebrating me, yours truly, Robert England, in the makeup for you fans. We're not celebrating just Freddy, because sure. just Freddy, you can find him on Hollywood Boulevard, out in front of the Jimmy Kimmel show, <laughs> getting beat up, and you can find him at Universal Studios, and it's some guy who's in the My Little Pony show, <laughs> and I wanted, with a hat on, and with a sweater on, I look like an impersonator. This is me, in a, and you'll know it, in a flashback t-shirt, and I'm able to get the light in my eyes. These are my eyes, they're not the contact lenses. And the fans that had their pictures taken know that. So that's what was commemorative about it. Andy, you see the makeup. If I wear that hat, if I wear the hat, give me the hat. If I wear the hat, I look like Donald O'Connor in, you know, <laughs> hey, you know, be a clown, be a clown. <laughs> you can't even see me, you know. Now, I've told you before, I love your book, Hollywood Monster. If you Thanks. haven't read it, please pick it up. It's just a great read. So many stories. One of the things I want to ask you about is there's a couple stories in there of when you were making the first movie, the times that you would go off the studio premises and maybe surprise a few people. Well, I went to a, 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 a wet, my agent. Uh, his fiance had a, a bachelorette party, and uh, I went to that. And you know, LA is famous for its misuse of L outdoor lighting. And here I am underneath the kitchen window of this mid century house somewhere in the San Fernando Valley, and the girls are all in the kitchen washing this grandmother's expensive crystal <laughs> from a champagne toast uh, of, of the be all the girls that are the bridesmaids. And I rise up slowly in full makeup <laughs> after the after shooting, and I rise up very slowly to look in. And these girls are beautiful. These are the the pick of the crop. And uh, I, I rise up to you know to scare them, and I'm bottom lit by this sort of dashboard lighting of outdoor Southern California landscaping lighting. 
And I got up, and they dropped all of the crystal glasses. <laughs> oh, no. One of the girls passed out and fell in the glass. So that was a big lesson about not, you know, going out in, in the real world as Freddy anymore. <laughs> You're watching Super Sci-Fi Saturday Night on... He gives us the answer to that question. We shall have a new chapter in scientific history. And if he doesn't give us the correct answer, he'll receive some lovely parting gifts and the home version of our game. Are you crazy? What are you talking about? Well, that used to be the consolation prize for quiz show losers, but we had all winners at our Friday Night Frights talk show at Flashback Weekend. Take a look. There was the first generation of horror icons with the Frankenstein monster and uh, the Wolfman and... You actually were one of the second, you know, newer group, the new horror icons. Yeah. And uh, did you used to watch the old horror movies? See, I was a snob all through the 60s <laughs> and 70s, and I forgot, I, I, conveniently or through pressure from uh, all of those, you know, people taking themselves too seriously, I kind of abandoned these, these moments that I had as a child that were very memorable to me. And they began as far back as uh, Forbidden Planet. Oh, sure. Uh, and they worked their way up. For many, many years, I loved uh, the horror. And, and I think that m some of my favorites, well, special, oh, Christopher Lee, sure. Peter Cushing, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, and then I didn't, you know, really discover Karloff until the late 50s or early 60s, oh, okay. because that's when it came around again, sure, you know, yeah. and, uh, and, and in fact, my first Hollywood lunch, I sat in a booth next to Elsa Lancaster, wow. the bride of Frankenstein and her entourage. I was a fanboy from the very beginning. I'd lost my way, <laughs> and it took Wes Craven to remind me of, of how important that is. Once a fanboy, always a fanboy. <laughs> and now you, you can take the boy out of the matinee, but you can't take the matinee <laughs> out of the boy. Okay, now yeah. we're going to have some of your former co-stars out here. Okay. And what I want to do is I'll give you the names, yep. and you just give me a short phrase the, the way you'll describe it. Quickly, okay? because this okay. makeup is beginning to itch. You've got it. Okay, first, Amanda Wiss. Oh, Amanda, my gosh. Well, I don't think, uh, here, okay, Amanda, I think, was brawless in Nightmare One. <laughs> okay, how about Ronnie Blakely? Oh, Ronnie, my God, I just want you all, at some point, to rent Nashville, the Robert Altman film, and watch Ronnie in that. That was her Oscar-nominated uh, performance, and she is truly, truly ephemeral in that role. Uh, okay, how about Jennifer Rubin? Oh, Jennifer. Well, here's my Jennifer Rubin story. She may not remember this. Jennifer Rubin did a makeup effect for the, the uh, arms, mm -hmm. the junky mm -hmm. arms with the right, little mouths yeah. on them of her track marks. The let's get high, you know, sequence. <laughs> they, watched, they, they looked at the film to do her effects, and they held it the wrong way. You know, and they used to look at film and say, all right, we got to put the makeup effects on this side of her. And they did this, like, incredible detailed, once-off, seven-hour makeup on her, I think. Oh, my gosh. And they put it on the wrong side. <laughs> so I think that Jennifer had this, like, 24-hour day in makeup. And then they had to, like, like, kind of hold her down on the set and everything. And I remember coming in the next day, and you can ask Jennifer this, but on the mirror in the makeup room, she'd written this sad little message in lipstick, you know. I thought, <laughs> we all thought she'd been kidnapped by Dan. Oh I mean, it was like she had a really, really bad day. Oh, in that. Yeah. How about Monica Keena? Oh, the lovely Monica. Well, you know, Monica, what I, my great memory of Monica on this movie was Monica was, because she had, she's our sexy survivor girl, Monica <laughs> couldn't wear a wetsuit unless she had... Unless she had a wetsuit panties on that I don't know about. Um, Monica was actually out there at that damn Crystal Lake in Canada. <laughs> she was out there in her real wardrobe along with Jason Ritter. Both Jason and I were able to hide the uh, wetsuits beneath our outfits. And so we could survive in the lake in the fall of 2003. But I remember after every take, 
we would all rush and jump into, they had a hot tub on the set for us, <laughs> so we wouldn't get hypothermia. And it was very surreal, because we'd be two Navy SEALs in Arctic suits. I don't know what they're doing in the hot tub. Actually, I do. <laughs> they're in the hot tub because of Monica. And uh, Jason Ritter, Monica, myself, and Ken Gerson. It was Jason, six foot seven Jason, Freddy Krueger, the lovely, beautiful Monica Kina, the heartbreaker from Entourage. And uh, Jason Ritter, all of us in a hot tub together after every day. <laughs> and it was, and I know somewhere there's a great publicity photo of that, or a great set still. I've never seen it, but I want one for my office wall. That would be so good. All right. And finally, Robert Rustler. Oh, Robert. Well, Robert, you know, and I, we worked hard on that because we were in this incredible sequence where I have to kind of come out of uh, Mar the Mark right. Patton yeah. character, and that was so exacting. That was Mar Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two, so that was very early on into the franchise, and that was one of the longest, hardest days, and I know yeah. that, that Robert had to, like, be there, even though he wasn't you know the effect sure robert had to be there for all of that because he was he was part of the sequence thank you chicago for helping make us america's number one all classic tv network <laughs> oh skipper you don't understand now he takes the seven and a half can't argue with that it's too stupid. Yeah, and I had to put my thinking cap on to do the interviews at our Friday Night Frights event. We've got a couple questions here from a couple people in the audience. Hi, Mr. Kruger. Me and my family recently moved to an Elm Street in Chicago, but my friends say that you could come and kill me anytime I fall asleep, but I think I might be safe because it's not the Elm Street in Springwood. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Don't you remember what I quoted so eloquently? Every town, Every town has an Elm Street brat! <laughs> there you go. Okay, so I was wondering, who was your favorite kill out of everyone? Well, I'd like to say that it was the boy with a hearing aid in part six, because that's so politically incorrect, but... Just like for an actor, the next job is always his favorite. <laughs> Every new kill is my favorite. <laughs> well, I hope the price of your ticket also included a free psychiatric session. Come on, I got it. I got a hot day here. I got a hot date, and from what I understand, Sven Gulli here is, is, is aligning himself to replace Craig Ferguson, so. <laughs> Robert, let me just say that we all appreciate your helping out the Midway Drive-In and giving the fans the chance to see you this one final well, time. I'm here all makeup. weekend, you guys, so come stop by my table. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Robert England. Since our feature tonight was a shorter movie, we've got more of the highlights of the fun we had at Flashback Weekend Horror Convention. Take a look. Uh, no. Oh, go on. <laughs> Sorry. About <that>. <laughs> we've got some lovely ladies and a gentleman who have all been denizens of Elm Street, and we'd like you to welcome them. Uh, thank you all for doing this. We appreciate that, and I'm sorry we don't have a lot of time to spend with you, but we would like to. First of all, Amanda. Yes. How are you? Nice to see you. Oh, I'm well. Thank you. Thank you. Nice and to see you as well. Well, that's very nice of you to say. Thank <laughs> you. But uh, you were the first victim of Freddy Krueger in the very first movie, were you not? Yes, I was. And you ended up rolling around that bedroom uh, just a little less than any given Kardashian, I think. <laughs> Oh, my word. I've never been compared to a Kardashian. No, you're much better, really. <laughs> and tell us a little bit about that scene. Um, well, it was shot, as most of you know, in a small room that was built inside a soundstage, and it was on sort of like a rotisserie spit type thing, and there was actual men outside cranking it <laughs> to make it go around, and everything was nailed down and glued down, and I, I crawled across the floor and went around as if, 
the eye was going across the ceiling and it was it was really exciting and exhilarating and I got vertigo I freaked out oh my gosh yeah yep. I thought I was falling but I was on the floor and Wes had to stop and come in and <laughs> calm me down and prove gravity to me that he was on the ground and I was on the ground and all was well and the one thing Robert said about you that he remembered about you was that during the movie you were braless no, wow, of all the things, he can't think of anything to say about me but that. Ronnie, how are you? Thank you for showing up. We're Good, nice. Thank it's you. It's nice to have you here. I was a big fan from Nashville. Thank you. And I really enjoyed here. that. Uh, you were Nancy's mom, and in typical fashion, you know, a teenage daughter drove you to drink. I think that's happened with a lot of parents, really. You had a scene, and, and I don't know if it was really you or not. Because you met your demise when the flaming body of Freddie was on top of you. Now, was that all stunt people, or were you actually involved in that scene? Well, Marge died a couple of times, but um, <laughs> well. the one where she was burned up in the bed, I did uh, work with, uh, with fire, but they decided not to use it. It was considered... I believe perhaps against the union rules. Oh. Okay. So although I did work with it, it wasn't used in the actual film. Let's talk to Jennifer Rubin now. Jennifer, I have to tell you, we, we did run one of your movies on my show. It was Little Witches. Do you yes. remember that? Yes. You were a nun, right? Yes. It was a chilling movie, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> did, you died in that, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But in, in the movie, uh, Robert was talking about how you shot that scene with all the, the mouths on your arm and everything, and that they had actually <laughs> screwed it up and did the wrong side. Yes. It wasn't the arm. It was the... They taped like a condom to my head, and so my head was to explode. Okay. <laughs> and uh, they, they had that on the wrong side. And he said that you had written some nasty note on the uh, mirror in lipstick? That sounds right. That's right. <laughs> Monica, my dear.